Hi, it's Jenna from Argolan, and we are here at Workroom at the Project Trade Show, and I am so very, very excited for this interview. We're standing here with Sean, who is the founder of Falling Whistles. Thanks for having us. Thanks for being here. I'm really glad you guys are here. Oh, of course. I am so psyched. Good. So Good. anyways, we are going to jump right into it, and I want you to give our viewers kind of the three-minute overview, what Falling Whistles is, what's the philosophy behind it, just sure. the backstory. I mean, you know... We're, we try and keep it really simple, right? What we want people to do is to be whistleblowers for peace. And so we sell these whistles and we use the money to partner with local groups inside the war in Congo to rehabilitate children and women and then advocate for the end of the war. And the idea is that, you know, you're going to wear it and you're going to go out and people are going to ask you about it and you get the chance to speak up for peace. Um, we're really working to form a global coalition of people around the world who want to see an end to the deadliest war of our time. And how did this whole company come about? Can you give us a little bit of the backstory? I know it's a long one, it's but... Been a wild ride. <laughs> um, you know, originally I was just backpacking. I wanted to get lost. I wanted, you know, to see new sights and hear new sounds and smell new smells and ended up in the Democratic Republic of Congo. We found a military encampment that was beating former child soldiers. It was treating them as enemies of the state and freaked out. Um, just started calling everybody new. You know, you got to get these kids pulled out. You got to get these kids pulled out. And no return of phone calls because we were just 26. Like, we didn't have access, credentials. And those boys told us that the kids who were too small to carry a gun were being sent to the front lines of war armed with only a whistle. They're being sent out as human shields. The idea is that they would use the whistle to scare away the enemy. Um, and then failing that, they were supposed to receive the bullets with their bodies and in falling, create a blockade for other soldiers to hide behind. So, you know, we ended up exposing the encampment to the UN. Kids got pulled out. It was a pretty intense day. Definitely more intense than any day I'd had. Went home that night, wrote a blog called Falling Whistles through tears, you know, screaming at the moon, sent it out to friends and family. They forwarded it around the world, and I woke up the next day to hundreds and hundreds of messages saying, what do we do? How do we help? Why is this happening? And it was like, <laughs> like, I have no idea, right? I just got here. I mean, we know nothing. And the reality is we've been trying to answer their questions ever since. Right. And so how did the whole whistle come about? I mean, obviously, I know the whistle was kind sure. of the thought, but where did you come up with this jewelry? Well, so I spent the next couple of weeks meeting with rebel leaders, warlords, diplomats, trying to figure out what's going on, who's behind this, what's causing this war, and came home, and I'm, like, broke and homeless and just, like, sleeping on my buddy's couch and honestly just screaming at people, like, kids are dying. This is happening. It's real right now. I mean, you're dealing with 6.9 million people dead, you know, 1,500 women being raped every single month. It's an emergency of, of massive proportions. And so I'm just yelling, and eventually people stop inviting you back. You know, I mean, it's kind of like, who wants to hang out with that guy? And so my best buddy, Marcus, he came to me one night with an old vintage whistle he bought off eBay. He put it around my neck, and he said, no matter where you go, keep those boys alive in your heart. Keep them at the forefront of this fight. And all of a sudden, I could go to parties, and I didn't have to yell at anyone, because everywhere we'd go, people would ask, what's the whistle? And we got to speak up in a way that made sense. Um, started saying, make their weapon your voice, be a whistleblower for peace, and just hawking whistles out of our pockets. And then it was just this a crazy explosion of young energy. I mean, you know, with our first $150, my buddy Dave hitchhiked from Austin to New York City. Through 40 cities for four months, he stopped in living rooms and just said, we don't have all the answers. Millions of people are dying. We're not going to be quiet till we see it change. Join us. Three college kids rode their bikes from Florida to San Diego, stopping in every city saying the same things. We had eight interns come from all over North America, sleep in bunk beds and work out of our garage for free on desks we got out of dumpsters. You know, I mean, just demanding more. And that's where it came from. It was from the us's. Um, you know, we literally started with $5, 10, selling whistles and, and finding ways to channel that money into local leaders so they could rebuild their communities. Um, and it's, it's been this wild, wild ride since then. So tell us what you're doing here at Workshop and at Project. I know you have your Project Whistle. We Give do. us a little background. We have a special Project Whistle. I mean, Project has been amazing to us. Um, you know, I met Andrew, the president of Project, and they have just embraced us and loved us and, and really said, what you guys are doing is extremely important. The world needs to know that peace in Congo is possible, and we need to unite around this. And so they've connected us with retailers all over the country um, who have become our partners in peace, who are out as our mouthpieces educating their communities about what's happening and what we can do together. So Project invited us. Um, it was really just a corner of storage. They said, if you can do something with it, go for it. And, and it was like, well, then we're going to build a Trojan horse. You know, we're going to come into this place that, I mean, we love fashion. But we're a campaign for peace in Congo. Um, we get to come in here, though, and educate 
the fashion community about what's happening and how they can be a part of solutions. You know, we've made a newspaper, we've got this museum, and, and it's, been, it's been an amazing experience. I mean, people have just looked us in the eyes and said, we're with you. As long as this takes, we're with you. Um, we need peace. And tell us a little bit about the 100,000 Whistles with yeah. Congress, because I'm really excited to hear about that. Totally. Well, the big, you know, this year, November 27th, 2011, Congo is having its first elections um, and, and, and in, in the last five years. And so what we want to do is we want to make them free and fair. So we're looking to build an alliance of retail, fashion, press, tech, people like IDEO and Stanford, you know, government, people like State Department, Carter Center, to make sure that these elections are free and fair. And so a big part of that is going to be trying to sell 100,000 whistles this year. Um, we think we can do it, especially with our retailers behind us. We want to sell 100,000 whistles this year, and we want every person who's wearing that whistle to be a mouthpiece for free and fair elections in Congo. Let's do it. Let's change the game and allow the developing world to rise, to have their voice heard in halls of power, um, to do what we take for granted every four years, right? Um, and so that's that's this year. It's all gearing up. November 27, 2011, free and fair elections in Congo. And where can people find these whistles besides retailers, but where can they get more information and see the story? Because I know there's a lot more to this story totally. than the cliff notes we did. There's a but lot more going on. Fallingwhistles.com. There's two things I'd really like for people to do. The first is I'd love for people to read the story. This is the original journal I wrote that night, just like screaming at the moon. I think it's honest, and I think people will understand who we are and why we're doing what we're doing. Love that. The second thing is we have a short film called Peace is the New Frontier, and it explains our whole strategy for ending the war and why you and I and the us's are so important and why we're vital to this. And so. Piece of the New Frontier, watch it. You can watch it on YouTube, watch it on our site, under the media page. I think it's really worth your seven minutes and you'll understand the whole thing very deeply. Thank you so much. I mean, this has been amazing having you taking us through here. Obviously, as I walked in, I was crying. It's just, it's such an emotional thing for me, yes. but I'm so honored to be here and I'm so grateful for what you're doing and your company's doing and well, it's and amazing. Thank you. I mean, I'll say this just to end, you know, we've, 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 stumbled before we could stand almost every time, right? You're dealing with a complicated problem. We're a bunch of young people who are totally dedicated to solving it. And so what we're asking for in the end is partnership, right? Be with us through failures and victories. Be with us through the ups and the downs. But, but in the end, we need to have a 21st century without mass atrocities. And so let's make peace in Congo the goal and let's unite worldwide around this common goal. We can end this and, and it can be done in our time. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you for watching this and make sure you go to fallingwhistles.com. These are great gifts. Everyone needs one. I love them. It's, it's such an amazing cause. You need to just find more information at fallingwhistles.com. But thanks again for showing us. We'll see you soon.